Good morning, church. I know everyone is so excited to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I said, Psalms 150, verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. So we will shout our praises unto God.
voice, let's sing the healer. The healer said the Lord.
morning, ALC. It's good to see you all today. Um, before you take your seats, go ahead and greet your neighbor from your left and to your right. Amen. God bless. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, saints. If you don't mind, please, I'd like to, if you can, right now, if you can stand with us right now, just stand and we'll pray. What it happens is that uh, probably if you're if you've been following the news, a uh, development has, has happened, I think, yesterday. Uh, our beloved country, Israel, was attacked by um, Iran, I believe. They sent off UAVs, unmanned aerial drones. Right now, um, uh, the apple of God's eye is under attack. And so all of us as Christians, we need to stand in prayer. Is that okay with you? Would you extend your hands, please, and, and let's uh, identify. Lord, again, we want to thank you so much. We lift up to you our beloved nation, Israel. Whatever we, other people may feel or uh, whatever they may sense, God, but th that is the country that is the apple of your eyes. And so we ask you, God, as the Lord and God of Israel never sleeps, I ask you, Lord, that your, that your iron protection give wisdom. And I, we come against any spirit, distraction, any... The enemy will never win, though that is your country. And we identify, God, with our, with our beloved country of Israel. So I ask, God, that you will continue to protect, give wisdom. Even our nation, the president of the United States and the rest, may we make the right decision to support the nation that is so beloved. Because you said in your word, you will bless nations that will bless you. And that is what we want, God. Protect Israel, in the name of Jesus. Now we pray now for this service as we come together to worship you and to learn and to grow. Lord, we have come from different backgrounds, maybe carrying different baggages. And there are many reasons why we're here. And I pray, God, that you will remove any distraction. Lord, that you will, that you will focus our attention upon you. Our Lord and Savior, your word will penetrate the depth of our hearts that we will learn more about you and we will make that decision to not only to believe you, to follow you. For one of these days, Jesus, you will come. When the trumpet sounds, we will be with you for eternity. In the meantime, God, I pray, protect our ears and our heart that we will listen to your word today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everyone will say amen and amen and amen. Give God the glory. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Of course, if you were here for the first time, as always, we love you to be here. God bless you. Can we give God glory for the first timers here, please? Thank you so much. God bless you. And all those that have come back from vacation or from somewhere else, thank you so much for coming back. Give God glory again, please. Give God glory. For those of you that were here last week, we talked about the local church, right? The local church is a place to belong and to connect. And there was a positive response, and I say, and people say, Pastor, I thank you for, for allowing me to understand about the church, the local church, that it's part of the, well, the real church. And now the, some people say, I need to know my responsibility and, and to know more. And I thought that was good. That was good. But that's just a part of it. The local body is just a, is a believer. Just for example, when we leave this place, this will become a building of empty chairs. And when we come, we are the church. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so therefore, when we come together, it becomes a congregation of God's church. Yeah. Amen? So as I was preparing my message, uh, the message, and there were some notes, and I said, God, is this going to be a one-time message, or is it going to be a part? And I thought, and, and God pressed upon me that there might be more than just being a part of a church, uh, attending, having, having the privilege to praise, Privilege to see others, privilege to be welcome, and privilege to drink the coffee and cookies. That's good. 
But there's something I want us to know today. All right? That I want us to know today. And in Matthew 16, and and I'll be starting off with a verse that is so particular about you and I members and and what it can do and what can become in these last days. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19, it says, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea uh, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do you men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and some others, Jeremiah, or other of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Now, again, the relationship. He was asking the disciples what other people think. Sometimes that's our relationship, right? We know some people think about someone, but when it comes, who do you think I am? Jesus Christ says, it's a personal. Because there's something that he will, that he will open to disciples that will open up the floodgates of knowledge and understanding. And says, but who, said, but who do you say that I am? Now, of course, Simon Peter was, in, uh, was uh, endowed by the power of God. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, meaning the anointed one, the son of the living God. Verse 17 says, Jesus answered and said, wow, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, the son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Amen. That's what we want, right? That God will reveal as we continue to work together, the God's, the Holy Spirit will impress upon us. And there's, there, there, that is where we become safe. And he, and, and he said to him, and I also said this to you, that you are Peter, now the small pebble, right? That Peter means rock, uh, I mean uh, Petra, small pebble. And on this rock, your confession, he says, I will build my church. Amen. All right? And the gates of hates or hell or death shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The disciples and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. By that confession of Peter, the small pebble, he says, Jesus Christ says, I will build my church. And the gates of hell, gates of Hades, gates of death will never prevail against it. So this morning, I like, I made a, the, the title as the last day's church. Amen. The last day's church, militant and victorious. The last day's church is militant and victorious. Now, I know if you judge by what's happening now in the world, today you would say that it is dark, the dark days. You don't have to go beyond the, 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 the shores of Guam and if you go somewhere else. Our time is really dark. Amen. Second Timothy chapter, uh, chapter 3 says this, in the last days, it will be dangerous. Dark days, in other words, everyone, even when the church, the churches are open and closing, churches and people that are saying, man, what's next? Because everything that you see, the media will portray so that they can have audiences. They will always talk about the bad days. Dark days. But if but if, if I would, and I would agree with you, right? And I would agree with you, it's really dark. As a pastor, one of my responsibilities is to be like a gatekeeper. In other words, I will look at the panorama of what God is doing in his church, in the nation, in our island. See, God, what are you doing? What is going on? How come it seems like there's always the darkness is, is victorious? Now, but I just cannot stop there. In other words, I can't say, God, you know, it is dark, but we cannot put our, the, like the proverbial uh, ostrich, put our head down the sand and pretend that nothing is happening. No, there's something. But we cannot stop there. You cannot stop just looking. What's going on? It's so bleak. It's so dark. You cannot stop there. You cannot stop because there's something. You know what? When I say it, it doesn't matter how dark and how evil these days are, and they are. It doesn't matter how the enemy seems to be winning. It doesn't matter how other people are losing their faith, abandoning the faith. Churches are closing. It doesn't matter if sickness and death are always on the front page. It doesn't matter if addiction has become rampant. It doesn't matter that death, the churches, it doesn't matter that the churches now has become a place that you can go. But most of them are anemic. 
In other words, there's no power. They come from this time, worship, and then after that, the word doesn't penetrate. It doesn't matter. But there's something that I want to tell you this. It looks like the enemy, nothing is even being gained as we continue. It doesn't matter if the government seems to be controlling our belief. It doesn't matter if gender identity has become confusion. Our belief are being degraded. That's a dark day now. But I have good news for you. As a member of the church, as a member of the living church of God, this is the church finest hour. This is the church of the living God whose finest hour is now. Can somebody say amen? This is now. We are not in the losing end. There's something that God is doing for each one of you. He's talking to the father. He's talking to the mothers. He's talking for everyone that says, Jesus Christ, you are my Lord and my Savior. I will not put an inch down. There's something. Because right now, the last days is here. And this is a church's finest hour that's about to unfold before our eyes. I hear you. I know you. As a father, as a mother, you go and, and they will allow others to have to in, the, in the school, but they won't allow Bible study. And something was going on, but God is not done yet. And I do believe God is calling to rise up. He wants us to rise up, to stand up and speak up for righteousness. Isaiah chapter 60, look at this. It says here, arise, it has to be about Jerusalem. Arise, shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. None of us is like the sun. We are the moon. Amen. We are reflected glory of uh, the sun. And the moon is the reflected glory of the sun. Amen. Last week, this week, or last week, there was this eclipse. You know how many people in the States? Seven million people watched and waited for the sun. How much more? Christians. How much more for us to look at the son of God? Amen. It was news. But God is saying, look at my son. He's glorious. Jesus Christ says this, I will establish my church. Whose church? It is Jesus Christ's church. It's not me. I'm just an under, lowly under shepherd. I'm just mouthing what God has. I have got no authority. I'm just like, just like you. But, but my call is this, to usher, to tell that you, you can be also a messenger of God. And when, do, when we do that, when we tear our place in the local church even, something will happen. When the children see their parents, fathers, praying, the most powerful family is the praying family. When the father prays for the children, when the, bless, when the mother prays for the children, something breaks. I'm calling for the husbands, the fathers. You have been asleep for a while. It is now time for us to take our authority as what God has given to you. Otherwise, right now, the Debras are rising because the men are not taking their place where God can use them. Arise and shine. And I, it is my prayer that after this conclusion, there's an urgency in your heart. That you will not see, oh, that's dirty over there. Oh, something you will not say. You will stand strong and decree and declare that you will break, that you will lose the blessings in the midst of difficulties. God wants you to do that. Don't wait for me or don't wait for the pastor to do that for you. You stand strong because the tide is coming and it is on now. We are no longer and behold, the darkness will cover the earth and the deep darkness of people. But the Lord will also rise upon you and his glory will appear upon you. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, he was so overwhelmed with the goodness of God. The people will begin to fear. People will fear you not because of who you are, but because they see the glory of God. They know that everything that comes out of your mouth is life. It's life. We become blinded. We become by the enemy. Why? The media has so saturated us. We open this morning. You open your social media. 
and you come to church to worship in order. It is my prayer. The second verse, Second Kings, says this. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 15 and 20. This is my prayer for all of us. A battle was raging. The prophet Elijah with his, ser- with his servant were looking at the bigness, the vastness of an army that's about to engulf them. Look at this. And, I, and you, can, you can refer to that later on, but it says here. And when the servant of the man of God, look at this. The servant of the man of God. The sting. First generation, it is so easy to follow Christ, right? Because you are in. But if you are the second one, sometimes that's where the problem is. There's no such thing as second generation experience with God. It has to be always first generation. It says here, and when the servant servant of the man of God, arose early and went out. There was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? Listen to me very carefully. It doesn't matter how close you are to God's glory. Unless it becomes you, open your eyes, it won't matter. This man was serving who doubled up Elijah's miracles and healing. And yet... He was so overwhelmed by what he sees because he was looking at the eyes of circumstances. And he says, alas, alas, my master, what shall we do? So he he answered and says, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Look at this. And Elisha prayed. Now, look at this. Have you been to a person that you ask him about and then you say, oh, why don't you see it? No, you, you get mad. But because Elijah is a prophet that sees the goodness of God, he did not rebuke the servant. He did not say, you're not worthy of my servant. He says, look, and he prayed to the Lord. Can we pray just like that? Every time that somebody might not receive the Lord, they might not understand, and they mock us. We pray, Lord, can you open their eyes? Can you open them, please, so that they will see what I'm seeing? It is so hard to, to tell someone about Jesus when their eyes are closed and minds are already done. It is so hard. And so you pray, God, open their eyes of understanding that has been blinded by the enemy. Don't rebuke them. Don't say, oh, you don't understand. You don't attend a church. You don't know anything. You don't even know your word. Don't rebuke them because God loves them too. And that's what happened is this. And Elijah prayed said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. That is my prayer, my brothers and sisters. I am just like you. Lord, every time that we come before you, may you see your glory. Maybe not just mouth, words of exaltation, nothing. But God, I pray we will come before you with humbleness and humility so that you will break through. That's my prayer. The church is not there for us put our talents. Talents will never matter. The church is for us to say, God, let us be just like you so that the world outside will see your glory, that they will say, tell me about Jesus. It is not about talents. Talents are 10 cents. You, but the humility, the holiness, the glory of the Lord, that's what we want. Are you still there? And he says, open his eyes that, I may, that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. Not just ordinary chariots. It was full of heavenly hosts of fire around the man of God, Elisha. Look at that. Look at that. He saw something. Are your eyes open just like My prayer is that in the midst of danger and trouble, you know, I sent out a note saying when David confronted Goliath, he did not talk about Goliath's strength, fierceness, but he talked about the bigness of his God. And I say, talk faith and not fear because it will change the difference. When I see this, I say, God, your people may not receive this because it is a little bit hard and perhaps you have to temper my heart. The church is militant and victorious. Militant means 
It's a fighting or warring. Militant is not a negative connotation, but we say militant. Militancy is a spirit that you hang on. Christians, pastors, and leaders must be militant because you are always against the tide. A dead fish will always flow with the river, but only a living fish will fight against the tide. That's what we are. We are to be militant because we, if you don't stand on your ground, you will be washed out by the first wave. Militant, fighting for war, for warring, having a combative character, not disrespectful, aggressive, especially just like the spirit of the two spies, Joshua and Caleb. They said, we can take them. That is militant because it is a spirit that draws us the first. When people says we can do it, you say, Pastor, God, we can do this by your power. Militancy. Victorious means we are winner in a contest or struggle. Victorious. Now, when I see the churches, and perhaps you know this, some are not growing, some are just have become like mausoleums, mausoleums, whatever you call it. There's no power of the Holy Spirit. For you, please pray for us pastors that we will always be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And when we begin to say, God, all the messages are just my notes, nothing will ever, ever change a person's heart. Some of us have become an eight to five job, and then you preach. No, Lord, forgive us. You are the one who calls us. You want us to be victorious. You want us to be militant. Because number one is this the church is built on the solid foundation. Who is who? Jesus Christ. He has never lost a battle, and he's about to. That's the reason why when we see a church, it is always starts from the top the pastor, the leaders. The board, the board, it's no longer B-O-A-R-D, the board members. It has become B-O-R-E-D. They become bored. Amen. It says the solid foundation, Jesus, because Matthew 16 and 18, I will build my church and all the power of hell cannot conquer it. Number two, the church is built by Christ himself. And that's the reason why we have authority. I have authority in the name of Jesus. I don't shy away because I know as long as I preach righteousness and his glory, he's got my back. But when I shy away from what God is doing, then I'm in trouble. Jesus Christ says, Ephesians 5, for the husband is the head of the wife, as the Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior. He's my Savior. He's your Savior. We are an army. Colossians 1.18, he's also the head of the body of the church, and he's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. Jesus Christ, the church of the living God is alive. The local church may be anemic. The local church may be meeting. And that's the reason why we go to the Philippines, brothers and sisters, I kid you not, I would cry. Because we would go to the mountains, and they'll just in a, in a shack, no air conditioning, they have air conditioning. If it is hot, it's hot, it's cold, cold. They're not air conditioning, but they will worship the Lord. One guitar, one drum, nothing. They will worship the Lord as if that is the heaven itself. Amen. And you go to the city and you see this magnificent building, all full of air conditioning and the music, but there's no life. Why? It has become it's like saying, well, it becomes part of our Sunday routine. Brother and sister, God is saying that is not. He created the church is like an aircraft carrier. We go and we have the F-18s that fly closest to enemy. That's what it is. That's how God, it's not a cruise ship, of course, I love. But some people have treated the church as a cruise. You pay for it. The number one thing that a cruise makes you without even telling you, is they want you to be fed. That's all. To gain more, to be relaxed, to relax. The church is not a cruise ship, my friend. It is a battleship where each one of us will fly out. Amen. Take territory. We are not holding the fort. 
There is no church, the living God, the church of God is not a, oh, okay, you protect the fort. No, no. We go in. In the army and the military, of course, I was in the Air Force. I tell you, don't wait until the enemy is prepared. Go into the battle while they're not ready. That is how it, us must do it. Don't wait until the enemy. If you see the enemy, it's too late. We need to continue. The church is built on Jesus Christ. Number three, the church is against the gates of hate. The church, you, we are the elders of the church. Genesis 3, 15 says, and I will put enmity. Now, this is just about the woman and between your offerings, off, uh, offspring, us, and hers. He will crush your head, Jesus, and you will strike his heel. In other words, our Jesus Christ will crush the head. You are the sons and daughters of faith. We are the winners. We are always. It says here, he will crush your head. We are the gate itself. It's like an opening. Remember when God impersonated and came at the gate of Lot. There was the gatekeepers. That's why the men, all of us, are gatekeepers. Who are the responsible of the gatekeeper? We are the one that will challenge who's coming into our place. We are the one who will stand in the olden days. The gates are the most, the wisest, the strongest. They will stand on the gate and they will challenge anyone. What is your business? Are you here for peace? They will challenge. All of us are just like that. But now, my brother and sister, hear me out. The enemy is no longer outside the gate. The enemy has come to the social media inside. Brothers and sisters, may I say this to you? We need to be gatekeepers of the minds and hearts of our children. Because Christianity said it's one generation lost away from extinction. Christianity is always, but God says, I, this is the last days that I will. And number four is this, the church is composed of us, the called out ones. We are the one. We are the church. Last week we talked about it, and I'm not going to say that anymore. I have another good news for you. The first good news is this. God is doing great things. And the good news number two is this. The church is waking up to her destiny. The church, you, I pray the first part, there's an inkling in you saying, God, he's talking to me. And I pray that's the that's prayer. You know, don't say, oh, he's talking about my neighbor. No, I pray, God, I'm talking to myself. The church is discovering their destiny. It's destiny. Look at this. Genesis chapter 22, verse 17. Another blessing. Blessings I will bless you in multiplying, and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemy. It has to do with Israel, of course. Abraham. But we are the offspring, he says, and you will possess the gate of the enemy. Amen. We are the one that will take authority. We are to possess the gate of the enemy. And I pray that as we continue to be, to be reminded that we are beginning to take our destiny, I'm reminded of the prodigal son. Prodigal means lavish, right? Lavish. Let me read to you, and it's not my project, but there's a part that says, And then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that falls to me. So he divided them his livelihood. So if you're talking about that, there are three, right? There are three, the dad, the, the, husband, the, the son, and the, and the other one, because the father gave the portion of good that falls to me. He said, and not many days after, the younger son um, Gather all together, journey to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in one. Then he went and joined himself to a, to the citizen, to a citizen of the country, and he sent him into his field to feed. And he would gladly have filled so many of the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. And verse 17 says here, but when he came to, his, to himself. All right. And do you see that? When a Christian has been playing church, when there's no more power, when a Christian only knows how to pray about the food, asking, it's the, that's it. And he came, the, the son says, 
And he came to his senses. The Holy Spirit gave him the sense. Saying, and he said, he came to himself. And he says here, when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? I will arise, verse 18. That's what it is. I will arise. Listen to me very carefully, brothers and sisters. The most tragic life of a Christian is a Christian that doesn't know their position and place in, in God's eyes. They're the most miserable. They're gifted. They've got talents. They got resources. But they don't know. And they've been feeding on other people's opinion of them. That's a miserable life. And he says here, then he says, how many of us, I will arise and go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your servants. In other words, the lesson for that prodigal like us, the church. We've been playing church for a while. And now it's time. I want to say, wait a second. Now, why am I playing games with God? He's the holy one. And then he says, I will arise and go to my father. Joshua 1, 3, 5 says, also every place in that sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you another promise that God, when God called Abraham, he says, look from here to there, and I will bless you. He says, everything that you see is yours, God said to Abraham. It is the same thing. When you have your eyes open before God, it becomes a different panorama. It becomes God's favor upon you. Don't waste your time. And it says on verse 5, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will also be with you, and I will not leave you nor forsake you. Most churches are just like this. God started small. God will put you people, and you begin to work together. And then eventually, God says, you've been faithful. The disciples were asked, were told, wait in Jerusalem. The book of Acts chapter 1, and we'll go there uh, in, uh, but you shall receive power when you, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Luke 19 and 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you the authority. Say that with me, please. Authority. Authority is not on your own. It is somebody else giving you the authority. It's like a, a, a person, you, if you have a son, you tell your son, Son, from now on you are going to guard our refrigerator. It's your authority. The son will guard it. But the son, others will say, hey, I want to eat. No, 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 no. Dad says, don't. Why? Because God gave me the authority. Right? Okay, someone say, hey, man, I don't know about food, right? So he says, authority. He says, I have given you the authority, trampling serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, I don't know, I'm just a simple-minded pastor, but I think God is saying, I want you to be victorious. I want you to be a triumphant. I want you to be an overcomer. I want you to be taking the place. You are the head, not the tail. I want you to take authority. In the dry place, you can speak life. Amen. You can speak life. The church is supposed to win. Because Jesus Christ died for us. The church is supposed to win. It is unnatural for church to lose. It's so unnatural for a child of God to live a weak, discouraged, beat down life. It is, it is so unnatural. You and I are citizens of heaven. You are the sons and daughters of the king. Begin to act like one. Begin. I mean, I'm, I'm saying this. We are the sons of the Most High God. And we are acting as if we don't have any bread. We need to start saying, God, you have anointed me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has given the courage. We are not just survivors trying to hold on to what we have until Jesus Christ comes. We are not just few leftovers. We are more than blessed over. We are not beaten down warriors trying to hold on to the fort. Jesus has come to save us and he wants us to be strong. If your family is in disarray, if your marriage 
is being destroyed. If there's a third party, you rebuke. Saying, God, you have ordained. If your children are going this array, tell them, God, these are your camp. We are in the authority. It is not our own authority. It is Jesus Christ's authority. Can somebody say amen? Yes. All right. Hallelujah. I was told one time, says, Pastor, why do you, why do you preach so, so hard? Do you know if you read Revelation, Jesus Christ won? Of course, I know that. But from Genesis to Revelation, it is a story of victory after victory after victory. I know my Redeemer lives. I know he's going to win. But in the meantime, as I breathe, as I walk, as I fight, as I battle, there's going to be mountains. There's going to be rivers. There's going to be times that I cannot do it anymore. And I will go, God, and I will look back. Look what the Lord has done. What is your story that you can tell your children? What are the battles that you have won? You have to have a story. You have to have a story to tell. You tell them all oh, long time ago in a faraway place. What is my story here? One of them is this. This church was built by Jesus Christ. There was nothing. And then he built it. And I would say, Lord, as we go on, look what the Lord has done. Look at your neighbor and tell him, what is your story? What is your story? What the Lord has done for you? Amen? Amen? What is the story? Our author is the one writing it down. Amen? Oh, my Lord, God is so good. God is good. There's a record of testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. I still have uh, five minutes, right? Can, can somebody give me five minutes, please? Yeah. Five minutes, please. I've, five minutes? Do you agree? Give me five minutes. Some of you know this, but you're not giving me. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. All right. We'll be here until 2 p.m. <laughs> Let me give you reasons why I believe the, la the church today it's fine as are. The power of the greater one. Look at this. I, I, I have noticed that. The power of the greater one in us. Amen. The power of the greater one in us. It is found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you, say this with me, Amen. is greater than he who is in this world. Amen. He that is in you <laughs> is greater than he that is in this world. In other words, Jesus Christ, who is heavenly, is greater than any earthly stuff. Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ live in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The power of the greater one is in you. Amen. The power by the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? Is greater than he that's in this world. There are many. The enemy has so many names. The enemy comes as an angel of light. He doesn't come with horns and all that. Boom. No. He comes in like a sly. His name could be drug addiction. He comes out with many names. Drug addiction, pornography, lust, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, depression, suicide, mental challenges. He come telling us that his name is greater than your, Jesus Christ is greater than our heart trouble, cancer, diabetes, kidney trouble, even homosexuality, fornication, adultery. God who is in you, in me. Is greater than anything that is in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are created to exercise power and authority. And I hope you and I. And the next one, there's power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. There's an old song. There is power, power, wondrous work in power in the 
of the Lamb. Oh, man, you know this. All, anyone that is older than 40, you know this. You're just, you're just faking it. Man, I grew up in the rock and roll in the 70s. When I heard this, I said, why would I sing that? And I sang it just like a hippie then. I said, there is power, power, working work. Of the Lamb. See, I told you. You've been watching about, you, you've been listening to the, to the new songs, but in the old times, Sister Manchi was singing. Yeah. All right. There's power in the blood. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. What was needed was the blood of Jesus Christ, right? There's power in the blood. He covers us. That is the reason why the anointing oil that symbolizes the Holy Spirit and the blood, you always anoint. When your kids are misacting, get the oil. Lord, bless them. Lord, continue. Lord, continue. Even everything. Why? Because you are saying this property is under God's property, the blood, the Passover lamb. Life is there. These are things that you and I can remember. Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ then is as powerful as today by the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ. I remember one time we were flying on, on a, an air, uh, commercial flight. It was the old Continental. And there was this a little bit. Oh, everybody became a Christian. They pulled out there. But I said, I pleaded the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I want to see my wife and my children again. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Even, yeah, I just, why? There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. When a church is anemic, they need the blood of Jesus Christ. They need to have that spiritual infusion. If a church is not functioning as designed, pray for the pastor. Pray for the point man. There's always, it starts over there. Pray for me. Please, pray for me. The third one, we have the authority of the word of God. What's the reason why we have the power in the last day's church? The word of God. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says here, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing even the dividing of the soul and spirit and joints of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. And that's the reason why if you are fading, if you are backsliding, the first thing that you will put aside is the Word of God. Because the Word of God, when you read it, it convicts you. It sees the intent of the heart. Show me a Christian that is floundering, and I will show you a person. I send for it every month, reading for the day. And I'm not sure, I hope you are doing it, but that is not for you. Just look. It is for you to become stronger as you continue. Jeremiah 23, verse 29. Sir, can I have my water? He says, dear, it's not my word like fire. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. I understand. We used to have our Bibles, you go to church, it has changed. I understand that. As a matter of fact, I use this because my eyes are no longer, you know, I used to read. But that's, but you have to have your own Bible. You have to have your own word, the rhema word. And it says here, Jeremiah 23, 29, it's not my word like a fire. When you read the word of God, there's something that will infuse you. You cannot but help. It will set you on fire. Set you on fire. And he says, and it's like a hammer that breaks the rock. In other words, it will destroy your hardness. It will destroy your pride. It will destroy everything that is on its way. It will make it fluid. Why? Because that's the word. Pick up your word every night in the morning. Just read through it. You soak into it. You will give wisdom. You get life. Because that's how it is. He's not there to condemn us. He's there to make us stronger. Amen. The enabling power or the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is another one. And that's the reason why. Why is the last day's church is militant and victorious? The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you shall receive power. The Greek word there is dunamis. 
You know what dynamis? That's what they call the word dynamite. Dynamo. Yeah. Dynamite is called the power. Dynamis power of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes in a dry ground like any church, it will infuse life. The baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking tongue, and you shall be witnesses. And they were called the first century Christians. These are the people that turned the world upside down. Can you imagine, my brothers and sisters, they held on, they died because of their witness. Intercessor prayer for the saints, another way why I believe. And that's the reason why when you hear the word, please, there's Friday intercessor, when you don't feel like praying, the enemy has got you. Pray, because once you pray, you begin to see your emptiness. You begin to see, God, help me. James chapter 5, verse 16 says this, Pray for one another, it may be the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. When you go in communicating with God, don't leave your place in the morning to go to work without praying. You may never know. It says, God, in the place of gratitude, it's just simple, Lord, I'm in a place of gratitude. I want to thank you. I don't know what will happen today, but I pray that you will pave my way. Amen. And you will invoke Romans 8, 28. Lord, I don't know. Romans 8, he will make things work together for good. And says, God, be effective. And also the last one, we have supernatural weapons of our warfare. Look at this. The authority that you have as a mother, as a grandmother, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 6, for the weapons of our warfare. Whoa, wait a second now. I thought we were talking about a church that we need to kind of love one another, settle down. But it says warfare. The word of God says warfare. We are in a battle. The enemy doesn't mind those that have been lost. He doesn't care about those that, have, that are in his territory already. He cares about those that are militant. You and I, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Strongholds has two meanings. Strongholds meaning as a fort protecting your place. A stronghold, an addiction, something that is in you that has been, you've been suffering through. God wants to destroy that stronghold, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of the living God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is a reasonable uh, service. But says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we do that? If we don't fill our minds with God's word, we will be filled with doubts. We will be filled with defeat. The only way that you can protect your mind is to fill yourself with the word of God. Of God, casting down imaginations and arguments, everything that exalts self against the knowledge of God, bring every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when you obedience is filled. In the Amplified Version, it is more for all of us. It says here, the weapons of our warfare, again, warfare, not only as a family, you are a soldier of God. Amen? You are. Whether you like it or not, in the army or military, do you know that they don't count how many able-bodied soldiers that they have inside the mess hall? They don't. They always count the able-bodied outside that are in the war field, in the, in the field. The churches are like that. We can have the many different services but if you are just feeding on, we are not battling, then something is wrong. It says here, the weapons of our warfare are not physical, weapons of the flesh and blood. And may I say this to you, have you seen someone look at you as if, you know, why doesn't that person like me? And then you tell them that that's the enemy, right? When you're doing good, and then suddenly, even your husband and wife, let's, let's go home, all right? Let's go home in the home. Now, early morning, your wife look at you, you look at her, and she says, why, why is he looking like me? Huh? Why is he like that? You fight. Now, when two Christians, listen to me, when two Christians fight, listen to me, when two Christians fight, the enemy pulls back. 
You know what he does? He gives gloves. <laughs> because your neighbors, you're not the enemy. The colors of my king is not your enemy. How I came from, from it's not your enemy. Your enemy, the enemy that we have all is in common, is the enemy using us, the people around us. And that's the reason why when I look at you, I don't look at you as the outside person. I'm looking at you. How come that person is acting like that? They said, Pastor, when you look at me, says you look into my soul. No, I'm not looking at your soul. I cannot, but I just want to see. Tell me what, what are you, you know, because I want to see what God is doing in your life. That's what it is. What are you now? It says here, our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments in every example, a power thing that sets itself against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive in the obedience of Jesus Christ, being ready to punch everyone in obedience when you own, when you own the child is complete. What does that, that mean? You have authority in the name of Jesus. Listen to me very carefully, please. I know some of you are about to, uh, uh, to take a break. You through your mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. You can take authority by confession of faith. You can take authority in a, in a situation, in your family. You can take authority in your office. If your boss, hopefully no one is your boss here, right? The boss is always as if nagging at you. You don't have to fight back. All you need to do is look at that person. And maybe you know the office. Anoint that. Yeah. And says, Lord, I want to love my boss, but. Uh. <laughs> and say, God, I take authority, whatever spirit that has probably attached itself. I don't know his background. Perhaps he's been abused, mistreated. I don't know what he has baggages, but I take authority. I decree and declare that there's freedom in my boss's life. Now, you don't know what's happening, but the Spirit of God is moving. And one day, whoo, the boss will come in. Hi, how are you? Last night, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I had the dream. I was falling through. I'm going to hell. But now, praise the, uh, praise the Lord. But now, and he said, hey, you've been working hard. Why didn't you take the day off now? Right? What did you do? You prayed. Anoint. If your husband is not loving you, amen? <laughs> Throw him a piece of bread. Love him. Yes, that's what we did with our children when they were little. We prayed for them. Lord, we don't know the future holds. Lord, we pray for them. We come against you know, rebellion and all that. And I say, God, thank you. We have supernatural power. That's the reason why, let me say this again, I close. In the midst of the darkness that we are going through, we don't choose the battles. In a battle, it could be dirty, it could be jungle, we might starve. But a soldier of God, we don't wait. We take on and press on. Why? Because our Jehovah Nisi means Jehovah Banner, he's waving ahead of us. Come, come, come. And we take authority over diseases, over sicknesses, over everything. The authority. Who can do that? Each one of us by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. What do we do to prayer? And I, and I put this in, in, in short. It says here, the will of God for his church, you and I, is to be victorious to be victorious. May I ask please wake up to your destiny. Wake up to your destiny. Whether you're young or old, there's a destiny that God has given you. Jeremiah 33 says, call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things which you have no idea. Take up your place of authority. Once you see your destiny, you're just not going to sit down. You must take your place. Among with authority in Jesus Christ. And the last one, you and I will achieve victory through Jesus Christ. Amen.
is my prayer is this today. What do we do to prepare? Second Kings 6, 17 again. Elisha prayed, Lord, I pray open my eyes that I may see. Open my eyes. And lastly, Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. It is always about humility. It is all be about repentance. It is about, I say, God, I blew it. I blew it. Please help me. Today, the word may have been hard for some of us, but if you expect that the church will just be there and then feed you, no, it's more than that. God is ordaining you. You've been sitting on the anointing for too long. You've been arguing with other Christians, but no one is ever brought to the kingdom of God. Stop that. Take authority and say, God, my time may not be long, my time may be short, but I'm standing strong. Wherever my, you have called me at the job, in the military, as a housewife or anyone else in the school, I stand strong and everywhere I go, it says, all the soles of your feet, that's your territory. You can change the atmosphere because Jesus Christ, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Would you please bow your heads for a moment? Lord, again, we come before you. We don't know. I, I, I just spoke it out, God, and, and I hope it found a, a good ground. And I don't know what, what you have in store for each one of us. And I pray, God, that you want us to be open our eyes. But I pray, Lord, that we will humble ourselves before you. That we'll say, God, I don't want to exist. I want to be alive, to have, make a difference, to help someone that is in the dark to see the light where I am now. Lord, it might be dirty. It might be something that I'm uncomfortable. But, Lord, it is you who has changed me. And I pray, Lord, that even now from this very moment, I call upon, call those that have been Christians for a while, but they have never put on their battle gears, never gained a ground, and they have been hiding. And I pray, God, that you will break the rock that has been using it as their covering. I pray, God, that you will set on fire those that have lost their zest. I call upon the pastors. God has called you for a season just like now. The battle is raging. Men are dying. Women are dying. But God is saying, I have never lost the battle yet. And I don't intend to. I choose you as a soldier of God. Take authority. Take your place. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to call the pastors, please, just, I'd like to pray for you because you are just like us. We are all servants, and then after that, we'll pray. Is that okay with you? Please. And I want to make sure that our pastors are the one first in line. Lord, I pray, come up here, please. And I just want to simple pray. Would you extend your hands to the rest of us, please? Pastors, God wants to open your eyes. Your ministry is not done yet. No one retires. No one says, I'm done. No, 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 no. God, even the death, no one can. And I pray, Lord, that your church, your pastors will have their eyes open. Amen. Lord, today is a battle raging. You have selected these men and women to take hold of their authority. And not in their authority, but in you. Lord, we love to worship you. We love miracles of healing, restoration, deliverance. But above all, oh God, I pray, the souls will be saved. That your kingdom, reflecting the kingdom of God reflecting the church, reflecting your glory, 
will be so manifested among these pastors in the name of Jesus. Awaken them. Awaken the giant that has been sleeping, that has says, I'm done. No, 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 no. Say no. God is not done yet. God is not done yet. In Jesus' name. The next layers, please, anyone that is a ministry head, would you please come? The ministry heads, anyone that is leading a life cell or any ministry here, would you please come? Come. Ministry heads, come on. Quickly. Sister Menchi, come on, you are a leader. Sister Guy, all those, come up, come up. I just want to pray quickly so that we can close this. This is an opportune time. Lord, again, as your leaders, as your pastors, as your Minister heads that are coming in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you will anoint them to over. And I pray, God, that you will, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they will not shy away, that they will begin to take hold. Sharon, come up here. Amen. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you have given so much. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, infuse the dynamic power upon them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Brandon, would you please come? Pastor Dina, Pastor Brandon, come up here if you're here. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. God is not done yet. You might have gone through rivers that overwhelm you, that you're about to sink, but God is not done yet. God is not done yet with you guys. And I pray, Lord, that you will see as they stand upon my shoulders as soldiers, that they will see greater things for your glory. In the name of Jesus. 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 Amen. I want you now to turn around, please. Can you come up here, please? Turn around. Just uh, make your way here. Amen. Anyone among you, is there anyone among you who want to be prayed? Would you please come? Just pray. Come up, stand, and then let them pray for you. Come up. Anyone that wants to be prayed, come. You have heard the message, come. Please, come. Anyone, please. The Word of God says this. He will break. He will continue. Come. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be bashful. The God will, will use you. Come. 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 Oh, the Lord of God. The Word of God is saying, come, 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 come. Come, come, come. Hallelujah, Lord. The rest of us, can we all stand, please? If the Lord all still wants to call you, come up here anyway. But we will exalt the name that is above all names. Join us as we exalt the name of Jesus. Everybody stands. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Come. In the name of Jesus. Come on, please. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, God is breaking through the fallow ground. God is breaking through the fallow ground of, of our hearts. God, the seed has been planted. The seed has been planted. He wants it to grow. He wants it to mature. Hallelujah, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God wants to bring healing upon you. God wants you to go back into that place of authority in the name of Jesus. opportunity saints take this opportunity hallelujah Lord the king is in the room come see the scars of love Yeah.
Father, we have done our part. Holy Spirit, I pray, God, that you would move in such a mighty way into the lives of your children. As the gatekeepers, as the warriors of God, I pray, Lord, that you will open up our eyes to understand what you have, the stake that is, that is up here. What is at stake, God? And I pray, Lord, that in our time on this earth, that you will allow us to lead people into the light, to know you as their Lord and Savior. For that is what you did, Jesus. You died for us that we might have life eternal. And I pray, Lord, all the prayers and petitions that have been presented before you, Lord, would you grant them. I pray, Lord, that the anointing that you have given to each one of us will be protected. Help us to live a holy life. Help us to hate sin. Help us to continue to be righteous. Help us to be loving to our neighbors. Help us, oh God, to extend a helping hand to everyone. Help us to reflect just like the moon is reflecting the light of the sun. Help us to reflect the light of the Son of God. Lord, we thank you, and I pray now that you will remove all the things that are not from you. And I pray, Lord, that we will extend love, grace, patience to one another. And above all, oh God, you have called us to be warriors. You have called us to be soldiers that will stand strong upon the battle. Lord, we thank you. As always, if anyone among us, we prayed for you. If anyone does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, would you pray this prayer with me? Because we want you to be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We want you to be well. If that is your prayer, if you never met, if you have never given your life to the Lord, or you, you have straight away the prodigal son and you want to go back, Jesus is waiting for you. So let's pray this prayer. Father, I come before you just as I am a sinner. I confess that I'm a sinner. Guilty of separation from you. I need forgiveness. So I believe you're God. You became man. You, take my, you took my life at Calvary. You died for me. My sins are washed away. Thank you for the forgiveness of my sins. And now I open my heart. Jesus, say, Jesus, I invite you to become my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins and giving me a new life in your precious name. Amen. Father, I thank you today. Lord, for the healing, for the restoration. Their lives, our lives will never be the same again. Lord, continue to have our eyes open to what we see. Darkness may be there, but when the light comes in, darkness has to flee. We love you. We give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone will say amen and amen. Give God the glory. You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. Church, you may have your seats. All right. If you're blessed by the word, can you give God a hand praise this morning? The church militant and victorious. What a message. What a timely message. And if you're here for the first time and you would like to take up arms with the Button Life Church, recruitment is ongoing. And if you look to my right, your left, our FIT team has the ability to answer any questions you may have. We also love to get to know you guys a little bit more. And for those who have been attending Abundant Life Church for a long time, I think it's about time that we need to do some preventative maintenance on our weapons as well. Amen? Because we all know that we don't go into war with a dirty weapon. Because a dirty weapon means it's going to malfunction. And the last thing we need to do as believers is malfunction when it comes to hitting the enemy where it hurts. And those of you who are familiar with weapons, sometimes you gotta replace some parts. Whether it's your gas rings, firing pins, your bolts, the carriers, or the barrels. We gotta make sure that we're all staying on top of our maintenance. So that weapon can do what it was designed to do. 
to kill the enemy. So if your Bible is dusty and dirty, it's time to dust off that Bible. Pick it up. Make sure that it does what it was designed to do, to put the enemy where he belongs and to remind him of where he's going to be in eternity. So church, we got to make sure that we remain vigilant, that we remain victorious by the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. With that being said, can we give God the glory for all of our first time guests again? And while you are giving them a hand, can we give a hand for all of our birthdays for the month of April? Amen. And if you don't see your name up here, uh, please let us know in the media booth. We would love to add you up here. So if you have a family member that is not up here, let us know. And we'll put them on the birthday list for the month of April. It's also my father-in-law's birthday today. So if, uh, if you see him, just let him uh, know happy birthday. And we only have two announcements this morning uh, other than our regular announcements. The first one is the Women's Fellowship. Ladies, don't forget, on the 27th, bring your denim and your diamonds. All right? So don't forget to bring the bling. Amen? And they said that you don't have to buy, but hey, if you ladies want to buy it, just tell your husband, honey, it's a perfect time to go shopping. The sale on Macy's. Amen? All right. And the second announcement we have is we have the uh, National Day of Prayer. And if those of you who don't know what this is, this is where churches from different denominations come together. And we just pray for our nation. We pray for our island. It doesn't matter your background. We come with one purpose and one purpose alone. Like what we said earlier, to put the enemy where he belongs. So this place is going to be filled with different churches. So if you have time, it's going to be on May 2nd here at Abundant Life Church at 7 p.m. So please be sure to come and support um, all the other churches as well as our church. We want to be a good host. Amen. So please be sure to come out for that. And on to our regular announcements, which are the following. Every Friday night, we have intercessory prayer here at church at 730, as well as youth ministry on the CFM side, which is run simultaneously at 730 as well. And if you love to pray, if you love to pray, the women of Abundant Life Church meet here every day, Monday to Friday at 6 a.m. in the morning and continue to pray for our church, for our leaders our island and our nation and whatever if you have any prayer requests these are the people to talk to they will stand on behalf of you and whatever you are asking of god amen and with that being said can we all stand as we prepare to give our tithes and offering this morning lord god as your people just prepare to give what rightfully belongs to you lord you know what we ask before we even open our mouths so god would you meet your people wherever they are and as they give out of the abundance of their heart, Lord, would you open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they won't have room to contain it. So Lord God, we lift them up to you. We lift up to you our finances. We pray that you continue to bless your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, amen and amen.